Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Rosie. And I'm Shorty. And this is Skate Sunday. Thanks for joining us. What's going on? How are you, my babies? We y'all, missed you. Y'all doing okay? You guys aren't ready. Oh, they're not ready for who we have today. We're so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, should we just, should we just, should just tell them? Should, oh. we just, should we just tell them? Just tell them. We got chop skates on today. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got chef skates on and we're going to ask him everything. We we're have gonna, uh. a lot of questions. To ask. Yeah. We have Sam and Sugu and we're ready to ask him everything and, you know, just get down to what chef skates is. What does chef mean? Do you know what it means? I don't know. Skate we're going to Sunday going international today. Yeah. Oh, my God. We going to Australia today. It's our first international guest. We're international, baby. We're, and this is actually a crossover episode. So so if you're listening to this, you have to go over to Drop In Podcast and also listen to us on there. Yes. And comment on theirs and tell them you were here. And comment on ours and tell, yes. tell us you were here too. Mm-hmm. And let us know if you're if you're listening from Australia or if you're an international listener listener, like comment down below, put where you're from, put your flag, you know, like I know you're out there. We see you downloading, like Mm-hmm. So may, let yourself be known and <laughs> say hello. Say hi. And thank you for yes. listening. A huge thank you to our sponsors, Derby Warehouse. We're an affiliate. Use our affiliate link in the bio or down in the description below for all your roller skate needs. They have skates, protective gear, apparel, and so much more. I've even seen that they have Heelys and Epic Grind shoes. So what are you waiting for? Head over to Derby Warehouse using our affiliate link and get everything you need to make your roller dreams come true. And if you prefer inlines or ice skates, we also have affiliate links to Inline Warehouse and Ice Warehouse. So check out our links below and thank you Derby Warehouse. A big thank you to Dutia Skates for sponsoring this episode. Dutia Skates is a black and indigenous owned small brand based out of Virginia. They are a sister owned company that prides itself on their unique products. They design custom clothing and accessories for the skate community and beyond. Go to DutiaSkate.com to shop and while you're there make sure you grab your ticket for the skate camp it's called the east coast scramble um it's happening in october so hopefully i'll see you there thank you Thutias. now back to the show we have special guest chuff skates in the house <laughs> and you may know them from the drop-in podcast yes so <laughs> go ahead and learning. introduce yourself your name your pronouns sure well i'm sam my pronouns are she her and yeah, as you mentioned, I'm from Chuff Skates. And I'm Sugu. I also go by Shiha. And yeah, we're here with Drop In Podcast. <laughs> and you are our first international guest. Yeah. So we are very cool. excited. How cool. It's a privilege. We are coming <laughs> to you today from a local country in Australia. Um, so we just want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of these lands and that sovereignty was never ceded. Absolutely. So welcome, welcome to Skate Sunday. We're so excited to have you on. Yes. Um, give us like the origin story, like the the background, like how did this all become? Sure. I guess um, it's casting it, my mind back a little bit now because I think we've been around for a little over three years now. So um, just pre-COVID was the beginning of Chuff Skates. And it kind of started from my garage uh, as a very little side project that um, I guess I hoped that I would be able to bring more roller skates into Australia because historically, most of the time, all of our skates have come from other countries like the US and it's been a little bit inaccessible cost-wise. So I just wanted to get more skates into Australia and make skating more accessible. And obviously COVID saw this mega boom in roller skating. So all of that kind of happened around the same time. Um, Sugu has been working with me pretty much from the start, but in different capacities. So started like just kind of doing some contract graphic design work and then came on part-time and then as the brand kept growing, came on full-time. And so now it's pretty much Sugu and I that are the, the full-time 
people behind the the company and with a couple of of part-timers that help us out with other stuff um yeah and just I mean so much has happened in three years it's really hard to sum it all up I guess but that's that's how we started in yeah. my garage <laughs> Before that, we were just um, skate friends. Yeah, before that, we were just roller skaters. And yeah, we decided to do this crazy um, thing. But it's really love- amazing to like come mm-hmm. out of just being skaters and just decide, you know, we can have our own skate brand and create skates that are meant for parks. And you know, that's really incredible. So as far as Chuff Chuff goes, like as far as chuffed goes the brand what is the name like how did yeah. you come about yeah what does chuff mean <laughs> it's <laughs> definitely not a word that's used very much in the usa but you i guess suku and i use this word for a while do you want to tell people what chuffed means um it just means to be like really happy and joyful um and i think it started as a joke for a long time we'd be like oh chuffed yeah um whenever we had like pictures skating just like smiling really really Profusely, um, we just started using that hashtag for a while. We were like, yeah, Chuffed. yeah. And then, yeah, you just. I guess I had yeah. to choose something to call the brand and, and it just stuck, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a word that's used really commonly here, probably equivalent to what maybe you would say stoked, I guess. Oh. Um, so yeah, like that's what it means here. And then I guess now it's being used in other places in the world, which is cool. Um, I wasn't even aware it wasn't a word in the U.S. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I kind of want to like do a practice run. Like, how would we use it? Like, I'm chuffed. Like, I'm chuffed right now. Exactly. Exactly. That is it. That is it. Or like hype. Or like, I'm like, Exactly. Hype. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Tell us your background story. Yeah, we would love to know how Skate Sunday started. (laughs) I mean similar background we met skating and we were just like cracking each other up like (laughs) yeah our conversations were just really easy and we had really funny banter and we're just like man i wish we were like we said like we should be recording this like just joking (laughs) i was joking she was like no but like yeah i was like i have a i I was like i have a production background (laughs) so like if you really want to go for it like i i know video production you know so um if we we got all the things and, you know, worked within our budget and um, just so that way, like, you know, if, if it didn't work out, which it did anyways, but, you know, we <laughs> we just made it work for ourselves and, and did what we could and um, just tried it out and we just went for it. Yeah. And I think the more we did it, the more we just figured out what our goal was with it, because at first it was just kind of us talking to ourselves about skating and kind of feeling it out. But, you know, I really think that now we're really um carrying not like a responsibility but like the honor of being like a big sister to a lot of newer skaters and just trying to be a person that I didn't have when I was a newer skater so that's kind of it for us that's so nice so did you meet at the skate park we met on my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> like I was having my birthday party at the roller rink at our park and Rosie was just there okay. skating. And Cute. We met that day. Yeah. I would I, I would just go to the um our local we have like outdoor rinks here. So um I was there and this one was <laughs> skating around with a bundle of balloons. <laughs> like <laughs> and I was I, it was just it was just a good time after that. Like I don't know. I feel like it was like an instant like yeah it was easy to be friends definitely oh that's so nice and it makes a lot of sense now you said you have a production background it's why it's so like nice so (laughs) yeah 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 thank you thank you um (laughs) but we you know we've grown so much and honestly we've just there's some things that we've just asked like we just we're just like let's just ask them if they'll come on the show or let's just see and and it's and it's worked out and and we're you know we're just so happy to see like what else there is and there's people that reached yeah. out to us like e- even y'all like came and reached <laughs> yeah. you know just like just yeah. acknowledging us and come and come and remind you know keeping up with us like was really sweet and you know we feel honored (laughs) to be on your podcast Uh, well we're really honored to be on yours because I think we started a podcast as part of Chuff because we were like what other things can we do that you know 
uh going to add value to the community I guess there wasn't a lot of podcasts but you you were one of the ones that did exist at that time so I Mm -hmm. think there was some inspiration from you and we're always yeah about I guess promoting other people that are doing awesome things as well so yeah Yeah. Yeah, I've I've actually listened to the drop in mm-hmm. podcast before we started Skate Sunday. Yeah, I think I think yeah. we started yeah. before. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clearly I did that research, not Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought I don't know why I thought that that you'd been around longer. It's got to be like kind of similar. It was similar timeline. Yeah. I think yeah. you all just started like a few months after, maybe. Yeah. Um, we're it's a bit honestly, slower too. Yeah, it's been a year. Like it's been one yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember when you started, you were like dropping episodes and we <laughs> were so slow at doing it. <laughs> yeah. Ours kind of fits in amongst a, a, a busy work schedule. And yeah. So we're lucky if they're kind of one a month. But um yeah, I think at the time we started, I became really interested in what other roller skating podcasts there were. Um, and there really isn't that many. So it is nice to yeah. see it growing, which is really cool. I think we need more skate media, you know, yeah. like the more people can yeah. engage with different platforms. There's then. always a, there's always like a new podcast coming up like yeah. every, every other day. Yeah. And I love it. Cause yeah. it's like, yeah. How, yeah. it's everyone's experiences like documented and we're not all skating the same on the same thing or doing the same thing. And we're not in the same yeah. place. Like, and it's beautiful to hear different people's experiences, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and totally. So. And there's infinite amount of skaters out there that, yeah. you know, whose voices should be heard. Yeah. So, yeah it's really cool. Cool. Like, As much as we can, we try to like have a little dig and see who hasn't like been interviewed or like try to find some kind of person. We put out a call sometimes to be like, who do you want us to interview? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just to get as many voices heard as possible, like you said, I think it's yeah. real cool. And don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, you know? I like, mean, you're a whole, like <laughs> company. Like, <laughs> like this is like literally some. We we do this for outside of work. Like we have our own jobs, and then we set this up and do it. So you guys are doing the work too. Everybody does it in their own way and their yeah. own pace. And like we take our long breaks too, where we're not pressuring mm. ourselves to put out episodes. Mm. Like it's like okay, mm. we'll go season by season. We'll throw them out weekly when we can and then if we need a week off we'll take the week off Mm -hmm. but it's important to know um that you can't just force them out all the time i know there are podcasts like that but that's their full-time job right yeah totally totally it it ain't easy you know Mm, y'all are also a dynamic duo like that's where (laughs) we kind of have the scheduling the timing the energy like alone just to even like be in the mood to like do it you know so yeah yeah i'm just trying to do it we're all just trying to better the community (laughs) yeah yeah that's true so as far Um, as being like young entrepreneurs building this company like what do you think it was that made chuff skate so successful so fast because you are very (laughs) good i mean COVID. COVID, covid did help but i think that i guess being skaters people seem to resonate with that and we had a pretty clear idea of what we wanted to do and what we didn't want to do and and I guess a set of values that we wanted to stay true to. So you're saying we to be polite. No, but it was like your idea. <laughs> but, but I've never really done it on my own. Even when I was like the only person working full time for the brand, I still like formed the crew very early and would ask you all for like advice yeah. and and like try to do these things together so for sure it's never been just me doing it and yeah it was interesting because I really didn't think it was going to grow outside of Australia I thought it was just going to be like in our little scene down here but then as we started to do stuff with the crew and like video projects and events and stuff there was just a lot of interest from overseas as well which was cool and then I realized that maybe we could grow it even more and yeah I couldn't tell you exactly why but I think those factors of COVID and being like skater owned and operated has probably been the main drivers yeah I mean (laughs) it was hard to find skates so Mm, I'm sure that like when the bigger brands that everybody knew about were running out everybody was doing their research at that time and figuring out there's all these other skate brands out there 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's weird because like, I don't know, I feel timing wise, obviously we did not plan on a pandemic and it was, it sucked in so many ways, but it just kind of lined up weirdly that we had skates at the time people needed them. It was like, just the way that it worked out and uh, yeah it was- and that so many people decided to start roller skating yeah. there was just a massive boom um I'm sure there as well as here yeah. but here it was like all the gym shut all the sporting clubs didn't have people going anymore and everyone was like where did you get those roller skates yeah. like I need to do something and then yeah. it was like I don't know, our friends from RollerFit were running like online dance classes and I think a lot of other places were as well. So it was like this, everyone was like, okay, let's keep people active. Let's be a community because people need stuff. And there was like Zoom calls of like lots of people chatting about roller skating and like people like Kiana were doing stuff. And so it was just this really active time of growing community, um, which I think, yeah, it was not just us that grew quickly. It was just like roller skating that yeah. grew quickly. And taking over the the streets nearly. Like, yeah. Mm. Um, skate parks had never been busier than during COVID. <laughs> I was like, get the hell away from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you'd go to the skate park as we would have done before just because we were allowed to exercise outside. But then there were like three times the amount of people that there would usually be in the skate park. And I remember stopping, I stopped going to the skate park because they were so busy and Mm -hmm. we ended up just going to netball courts or whatever to skate in there with Mm -hmm. little homemade P-rails or whatever Um, because, yeah, it was so busy. Everyone just decided to start skating. Mm -hmm. And when you started Chuffed, were you shipping outside of Australia to begin with? No. I said at the beginning, I was like, this is just going to be Australia and we're just going to sell direct to customer through the website. (laughs) We're not going to sell to any shop and I'm going to run it in my spare time from my garage. And then we sold out our first order and shops started approaching us, Australian shops first, to be like, can we stock your skates? And I was like, oh, maybe we do need to do wholesale. And then like US shops started reaching out being like, can we stock your skates? And US skaters were like, can we get your skates? And so I had to reassess that pretty quickly, like in the first year. Um, and yeah, I guess I I ended up realizing that there was just this bigger demand. So we had to make more skates and make yeah. things more available and yeah, it was, it's been such a learning curve. Yeah. Like Plus the growing communities we were seeing in Asia. Yeah, yeah. So we started, like, because Asia is really close to us. So um, we really wanted to support Asian skaters. So we started a team there. And then I realised we couldn't really just have a team there and then not let anyone buy anything. <laughs> so we also had to start, like, distributing there. So, yeah, it's been a, a lot of learning as we've gone along for sure. And now as a international, you know, company, <laughs> how has it, how is that, how does it feel like, how's the love that you've been receiving feel like you, there's people like, you know, we're right now we're like, what, what is it? 14 hours difference time? Difference yeah. Right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're in the yeah. future. Like how we're, we're in different future. days. Yeah. <laughs> and every other day, I swear I'm seeing a new, someone with, with, a, with a new pair of chuff skates on their feet. Like how, has the community embraced Chuff, in your opinion? It's been overwhelmingly positive and so surreal for me. I yeah. mean, Sugu manages our social media, so it gets a lot of that, like, direct yeah. interaction more than I do these days. So yeah. I also get the bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> you get everything. <laughs> Don't yeah. scream at me. <laughs> I think that like it's overwhelmingly positive and it does also come with a lot of responsibility because you are suddenly like a brand that people expect things of and and brands have a lot of responsibility in yeah. roller skating so I think it comes with both um but over overall we love it yeah yeah it's, it's really it's, cool it's really cool and it's so nice to 
be able to, I guess, connect all these people to this thing that we like to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes, I don't know, sometimes we are so busy that we forget nearly to. Yeah, we're like, we have all this stuff to do. Yeah. But then you sit, stop and as you say, like I went out the other day and I still somehow assume I will know personally every single person in Australia who owns our skates. I don't know, like it used to be that way. And then I saw all the like these random people skating them and you're like, wow, like yeah. <laughs> it's still surreal and it's still very cool. And those moments you kind of stop and reflect and you're like, oh yeah, like it's it's this whole thing now that we never really imagined, I think. Yeah. And just to like add to that, um, how would you say that, Ch- how would you say like, Ch- how is Chuff Skates different from other skate companies and like, why, why buy Chuff Skates? I mean, we're different because I guess we are who we are. And that's like, that's true of, of any brand, like any founder brings their own kind of vision and, and values to a brand and from the beginning I think we've wanted to do things for the community and we've really cared about things like diversity and and giving back and all of that so we come with our set of values which I think makes us different but as to why buy us I think like I don't know I think as long as people are buying skates that make them happy and bring them joy it's fine like I feel so awkward sometimes when I go to the skate park and someone's like I'm so sorry I I bought these bonds I'm really sorry that I didn't (laughs) buy Chuck I'm like it's it's okay like we're not like we're not like out there for blood like we're like it's it's cool like I feel like it's such a small industry that that all the brands are kind of working towards the same kind of goals so I'm it's it's not like Chuff versus the world um yes <laughs> Sam from the beginning had two ideas that for me were what a very were a very big differentiator of other brands um particularly roller skate brands and it was that the brand itself wasn't going to be ex- exclusively for the profit of the brand you had the idea of distributing the profit um, not only for skaters that were representing the brand, but also certain percentage of our sales goes to non for profits. So I maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think many brands are still doing that. Um, which I think that's pretty cool. And yeah, whenever we've had we have pro models, um, we give part of the sales of that skate to the skater whose pro model is um which we're starting to see more in the roller skate world awesome. yeah. but at the time it was very 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 rare yeah, yeah um, well i think yeah. you guys are really really good influences in that way and that's probably why other brands are jumping on the bandwagon in that way is just you need to treat the community better if you want them to take care of you back and we have you know we have had people come at us like you you're wearing those skates like you need this skate and it's really like a toxic energy to bring to the community Mm. i think everybody should just be skating Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. oh yeah and like i've told i've told shorty like i've I've been approached i started on impalas like i was like i'm gonna get whatever i can afford i was and a lot of us started on skates like impalas yeah and i felt that pressure too of like i have to have like a more expensive skate or else like I can't I can't do this or I can't do that and and I mean now that I'm skating skated longer I know that's not it's the skater that makes the skate you know so <laughs> exactly. 100%. like you look at what's happening in Latin America or in Asia like people are skating these setups of like you know whatever they can get yeah. and it's so fine I think um however you get to skating is the right way and whatever you decide to ride is is yeah. also and not every funny. skate is for everyone like right. yeah some people want don't want to heal yeah example, don't want to heal like that's, <clears throat> some yeah. people want more ankle support some people want less ankle support some yeah. people like yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 it's just, it's good that we're not all doing the same I think. and yeah. and i think like i don't know obviously it's amazing and we love people riding our skates but I also don't want to see roller skating get to the point where we're like 
all just have the same stuff and skate the same Mm -hmm. way and Mm -hmm. have the same style like it's still really personal it's like you know I go to the gym and I don't expect to see everyone wearing Nikes like or (laughs) Adidas or whatever you know like an industry needs diversity yeah and we all like even though brands are like competitors it's important to have that competition because it does like like make us all want to do better and and like innovate in a sense like if we all just have the same stuff it's kind of boring yeah well, uh, the last supper collab when mm. did that start i mean i have seen the products i haven't tried anything mm. but i just <laughs> wanted to ask how that came about and what's next to come for that yeah That's for sure people, right Amigos? Yeah, yeah, the Amigo Wheels. Amigo Wheels. Well, do you want to tell them how we met last supper and then I can talk a um, bit about the car? Sure. We met um, Sean and LJ when we went to Quad Cup. It was the first time Quad Cup happened. Was that last, last year? year? Okay. Yeah, it was like <laughs> um, over, time. A, over a year ago now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we just really bonded with them. Um, they were kind of very new. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, it was just so cool to meet them and they had only the first like two wheels that they had at the time and we just thought they were really amazing people and another power duo <laughs> like you too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Like I think it's like they're it's amazing. super nice. Yeah. yeah. You've, you, yeah, you yeah they've interviewed them. them. They've been on your they've, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah they've them been on, on Skate yeah. Sunday, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they're really cool people. Yeah. And and we just vibed with them, I think. And they were also, yeah, just doing something different, Mm. which caught our eye, I think. Yeah. And then I think um, we came back to Australia, but we stayed in touch and we were like, it would be really cool to work together on something. And I like they they have like they're really kind of street specific wheels and I thought we could maybe do a wheel that was a bit more of like an all rounder. Like you can, it's a little bigger than their standard ones that they have. So it's still good for bowl because for bowl, I tend to like a wheel that's a little bigger to keep the speed and stuff. But it kept a lot of the stuff that they like to around the formulas they use. And they're just such good quality wheels. I think that's the thing I've used like some real rubbish wheels over my skate life. <laughs> Um, oh my god and they're just like they're just really good quality wheels and so um I was keen like I've looked into doing wheels in the past like proper hard park wheels and hadn't really found the right formula and I was like look these wheels that you guys do are so good um let's do something together and so yeah we just worked on an idea to make it a little different to what they have so we have like a a dual gyrometer so that the inside of the wheel is a little softer and the outside's really hard. Um, so you you get a wheel that hopefully absorbs a bit of the shock as well as like maintaining speed. And I love them. Um, I think they're really good and I'm really happy. Like they're so nice to work with, like as a collab partner, they're just super organized and super passionate and motivated and so responsive to emails yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's important that's important yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, they're good friends yeah. above all like we just love them so but yeah. don't know what's next with them though hopefully seeing them soon <laughs> yeah yeah first and first and foremost like catching up again and, yeah and yeah have you guys ever been to quad cup Slash Blade Cup slash whatever no, that no, event. It's, no, okay. it's across the country for us. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So so I mean, it's across the world for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm more impressed that y'all made that trip. Like, yeah. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. It was like straight after COVID lockdowns and we were allowed out and we were like, let's go. Let's go. And yeah. so it was great. I mean, it was it was so awesome to meet a lot of people face to face and make make new friends like LJ and Shan. Um, but this year we didn't go. We realized yeah. like we were gonna, and then we it's so far and so didn't. so <laughs> so much money. Yeah. So I can I can relate. It's hard yeah. to get that chunk of time to go to another place, and yeah, for sure. And I I do want to say I do appreciate how y'all collab with smaller brands and um that are be, be are just booming in this skate industry like um shout out to brunny yeah, yeah. y'all also work yeah. with yeah. Hardcore. yeah i have the trucks i have the wide trucks um, <laughs> Yay. Thank you. um yeah it's like brunny was our first collab and like some of my best friends so like it's funny because 
Brandy are uh, like doing their own thing. Like they're very like their brand is really different to us yeah. in like how how they operate and like how they uh, advertise and market. Like we kind of just like fun sunshine, and they're like we're so hardcore. <laughs> like, but but like yeah, it's just super nice to collaborate, yeah. and you get such a nice end product. And that. they have the best blocks in the market. They do. I mean, they're so slidey. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really, Remember really the good. first time we tried brand new blocks? We, yeah. I lost my mind. I was like, <laughs> the first, is this product? The first time I tried brand new blocks, I think I was sponsored by, like, another block brand. Oh, and it was, like, an oh, internal oh. conflict of, like, oh, <laughs> But never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my next move is is mm. those for sure. Yeah. And they're yeah. doing great things yeah. over there. So yeah. it seems like Australia is just popping in the skate community. Like, what is the skate <laughs> scene like over there? I just can't. I just can't imagine it. I just need like picture it. Like, you know, paint a picture of what it's like to straight in Australia. Not only park, but rink skating or dance skating. Okay, so, like, in context of rinks, like, you have such a rich history of rink skating in the US, but that is not the same here. So there's very few rinks. They mostly have all closed down due to insurance. There's probably, like, less than 10 in the whole country, I would say. And when Mm -hmm. I was a kid going to the rink, unlike this, like, really rich culture that you have, it was just, like kids Mm. rolling around (laughs) like it was just so different I didn't know much about rink culture until I really looked into like what happens in rinks in the U.S. and the history that it has like through movies like Roller Dreams and stuff like that so um I'd say dance mostly exists here in class settings like in maybe like a indoor sports center or something but it's quite small and what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like, I mean, if you're being honest, <laughs> yeah. Well, like it's it's just so different because like our indigenous culture here has just been so incredibly oppressed and underprivileged that like black people in Australia don't roller skate because black people in Australia like are treated so yeah. badly. Like roller skating for black people in like the 90s when I was growing up was the least of their priorities because you know so it's just like the politics here really sucks in that regard yeah um so there's very few indigenous roller skaters um and most people of color that roller skate here in Australia have migrated from other places yeah um so that sucks in a sense but like it's you know the community is growing in that way And I think that the biggest part of the roller skating community here is kind of like the park skating scene, maybe. There's a lot of, a lot of roller skaters in skate parks now. Yeah. Um, And that side of it, I think is kind of, seems similar to the US. Like when we were in the US and we would go to a meetup, it didn't feel that different to like a skate meetup here. No, Mm -hmm. no. I think there's just less people in general though yeah, in Australia yeah, yeah the population in Australia is so much smaller than the US while we still are such a big country yeah. that everyone's quite spread out yeah. and yeah but there's a lot of recreational skaters that's I'd true say. Like, like people cruising at the beach and stuff there's like a lot of that as well or just going to the netball courts and learning little tricks and stuff yeah um, but I think in that way, because there's less people, the scene does feel a little bit more connected, maybe. Yeah, 100%. Um, like, for, for you there, do you feel like the skate scene is, like, really big and, like, in kind of pods? Or is it, like, quite connected? Because I couldn't get a sense of it when I was there because I was there for such a short time. I didn't think it was big when I started because, you know, it was, like, good for four years before COVID and okay. the only real derby community that I, I mean, skate community I had was my derby team. And it mm-hmm. was just me like roller skating at the beach and just seeing a blader here and there. But mm-hmm. like, yeah. it was 
I didn't feel like there was anybody here outside of roller derby until COVID until there was like more groups mm-hmm. forming and I started feeling more comfortable going to my local rinks too and like deciding which ones I like to go to go to but it definitely feels big now mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, I agree I, I start I'm a pandemic skater um <laughs> and yeah. hey, you know, hey welcome, welcome. <laughs> so you know I I was like it, it's in my neighborhood at least like i didn't see a lot of people skating like every time someone saw me skating by they'd be like oh my goodness and then i'd see like a little girl with skates like two weeks later you know (laughs) after seeing me with some skates but i think honestly i think there's been communities like um like y'all have said before that there is a rich history of of skating and black culture here and like that's where it really like you know started and mm-hmm. I think there's communities that are trying to figure it out still. And I think mm-hmm. we're in a space where we're trying to figure out what spaces are good for people, you know, like, yeah, mm-hmm. obviously, yeah. like, not everybody's the same. Not everybody likes to do the same type of skating. But I think mm-hmm. people are starting to find their people mm-hmm. and find yeah, who they want to yeah. be with and and flock in that kind of way. Um, yeah because mm-hmm. let's be real like if if uh, okay i'm gonna expose myself i i, I love skating but trail <laughs> skating like you will not catch me <laughs> up at like earlier than 8 a.m like i am not getting up <laughs> i am not going far like i get gas <sighs> so easy i'm just like winded <laughs> And and this one loves to go fast. <laughs> like yeah, you yeah, will not yeah. catch me. And I'm just like, go, my butterfly, go. <laughs> be like, I'll be back after 20 miles. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll see yeah. you later. I'll see you in two hours. But I like Shorty, what, yeah. were you a jammer? In derby? I am a jammer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you still play derby? Um, we will be playing derby again. We are waiting for our rink to be done being renovated, but we're working yeah, on cool. rebuilding our team. COVID hit us hard. So, yeah. like, hold it, you know, rings, I think. it's yeah. still baby steps, but we still number 10 in our region. So, <laughs> hey, nice. <laughs> nice. Cool. Yeah. 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 I think, like, it's kind of similar here. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if because the scene here was so small for such a long time and like everyone did kind of know each other the fact that now people are like kind of finding their people and having their own little bubbles I think can like sometimes feel a bit weird it's like we're not all one big happy family anymore but it's also kind of fine it's not it's not political it's just that people are gravitating to what works to them um and yeah, it's still cool. Like when we have big events, so many people come and it's a big, yeah, yeah. it's a big good time. Yeah. yeah. I think it's similar over here. Like it, it, people have their own thing. You got your people that are trail skating, people that are just like rink skaters. Like they just love mm-hmm. to dance and there's people that are at the park, like, and, and we have events where we'll have like boogie nights or things like that, or just dance events and people kind of just intermingle within themselves. It's yeah. It's hard to be one happy fan. It's it's like almost it's, I don't know. I don't want to say unrealistic, but it's almost like it's kind it of hard. I mean, it is we share a hobby. It is, it's not yeah. like we yeah. are actually all friends. It's not like we yeah. all yeah. have the same. Ba- you know, you will find your people within any yeah. scenario. Any You're not going to walk into a yeah. workplace and love everybody. Like yeah, it's, yeah, it's no, totally. it's no, it's no beef. But it's like you know, yeah, you? yeah. we're all here. Yeah. Not, for yeah. not for me, but yeah. good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think social media makes that like, you know, it kind of puts those unrealistic expectations too. Cause it's really easy for everyone to be like one big happy family on social media because, you know, there's not real like interactions. So mm-hmm. you have like thousands of friends on social media, but maintaining thousands of friends in real life is emotionally I don't draining. I don't want it. <laughs> not yeah. not yeah. possible. So you know, it's like, it's just finding yeah. those balances, I guess. It's even, it's quite hard as a, from a brand perspective, which is something that we've been trying to work recently on, um, that, for example, we come across as this park roller skating brand, whereas that, it's just because it's 
mainly the content that we're putting out yeah. because it's who we are yeah. as roller skaters. But there's all these other people. There's all these other people that buy our skates that aren't park roller skaters. And they're such a big part of the market that lately I've been really trying to show More. that part of roller skating too. Um, yeah, there's so many communities and everyone's yeah. just doing their own thing and it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 So what is your park um scene, park skating scene like over there? And um if we were to visit, you know, maybe yeah. one day, <laughs> maybe one day, or if anyone was to visit Australia, um, what would what parks would you recommend? to go to so the thing that people outside australia probably don't realize is like how big australia is like it's not got a lot of people but it's it's huge. as big as europe it's huge so like where i grew up for example is 10 hours driving from where i live now and between here and there is maybe like 10 really amazing skate parks yeah. and not that many people live in each place except for in the big cities. So if you were coming and you weren't from here, I'd probably say like go to Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane because they're capitals and it's where the most roller skaters are. And there's good, there's good parks everywhere. Our government just yes. like has been like dropping money in skate parks <laughs> and like everywhere there's amazing skate parks. there's really good skate parks in everywhere Australia. like I'm, you can drive yeah. like an hour and you're like oh another amazing yeah. brand well, new shiny nice. perfectly smooth <laughs> yeah. it's Can't just relate. it's kind of crazy because <laughs> then we go somewhere else and i'm like what is this concrete it has like a little <laughs> in it. like, it's a, we're, like we're so spoiled yeah we're incredibly yeah. spoiled yeah i'm i'm from spain originally my whole family still lives there and oh my god whenever I go there I'm like what is this yeah <laughs> I can't skate this thing yeah no we, we had a friend that went to um skate love Barcelona Greg and yeah. he he was saying like the streets they skate on whatever like they're just like cobblestone <laughs> let's go like they yeah, just go yeah there. yeah so, yeah that's really cool so that's, we're, that's we're a little cool. spoiled everyone could come on a skate trip here and have a great time for yeah. that alone there's there's skating spots everywhere maybe not always heaps of people but if you're happy to just like go yes. with the flow and do your thing you will find yeah. skate parks everywhere yeah yeah uh, so tell me what's your local like what do you have near you and like what's the skate scene like there um we have our little home park in um our area that we always go to and it's nice because there's a roller rink too so That's if you're cool. feeling like dancing there's that part and then there's the skate park portion as well um but you know we lost a really great skate park recently called drop in it was privately owned so, and oh, wow. um yeah so it was it, it's things like that happening and it's just mm. a lot of um you know I, I, want, I don't want to say lack of funding because the money's there. It's just not being distributed towards things like parks and rec for the kids. So mm, yeah, know, a lot of fun. the parks are really falling apart. There's a few that are being rebuilt now that a lot of local skaters like Tutti Frutti have been working really hard to get rebuilt and make sure they're like proper skate parks when we do have them. But it takes a lot of community effort to get anything. Mm -hmm. mm. So where it's not as easy to find like different places to go to because it's like mm. do you want to drive so far for a park that's like okay <laughs> yeah yeah so, you're in the it, east coast yeah yes yeah. we're in florida i don't know yeah, yeah. okay cool awesome mm. i i don't know why i feel like there's such a big difference between the east and the west coast in terms of like how skate much time facilities. you got <laughs> <laughs> give me the summary version <laughs> uh, <but, laughs> no but there was um it's going back to like talking about what we have locally like there was one park that that they just built and i think they spent like it was like twenty five thousand. maybe it was more it, it was like it, it was like a crazy number and we, we we saw once we saw the park we were like this this is yeah what I mean. it, they didn't repave anything it was actually smaller than the previous park it was like oh. what did you do with that where where's where's, where's 
the math was and not nobody mathing. asks so it just yeah. happens mm. yeah <laughs> yeah okay so it's um lots of problem over, yeah lots of problems <laughs> over here um yeah. and then there was another park that was like historically around for like since I think someone said 80s, 90s, like it was around for a long time. They were like uh, three big connecting bowls and um, a huge like gator skin vert ramp. And um, it was at a YMCA. So yeah. it was like an after school program for kids. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and they 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 sold that and built apartments over it. Uh-huh. And um, like these ramps are so old that like I made the mistake of sitting on them. They were made of fiberglass. <laughs> and if you've ever s- like had skin like <laughs> so itchy yeah oh my god yeah so <laughs> it was not a good so if you would never fall in the skate park <laughs> <laughs> well the, con- the bowls were the bowls were concrete but they had like a section that was like all fiberglass so like the the boxes and um the quarter pipes and things like that um, yeah, but there's oh, like little scooter wow. kids like falling yeah. all over them, rubbing yeah. their bodies all over yeah. fiberglass. Oh. Like, I, I got up and I was yeah. like, why is my ass so itchy? Like, what is going yeah. on? And they're like, it's Whoa. fiberglass. But oh, um, wow. we I think I think we just have uh there's there's so many skaters that care about skating and um specifically park skaters and rink skaters, because there's a new rink opening up in our area too, mm-hmm. that it takes skaters and people that care about skating to make these things exist and to have yeah, that, totally. that voice you know and the more like you were saying community outreach just yeah. to get anything and companies doing the work too to throw the money down like you know you guys are doing that too with your mm. you know offering nonprofits some of the the um money that you're making off of your skates like that's mm. you know something a lot of other companies could be doing to actually do the work for the community because here it's all it's money we just need mm-hmm. the money to do it if there's money yeah. there then they'll not okay yeah because it's not coming mm-hmm. out of their own so mm-hmm. i think that it's something i've learned while running the brand is like for us doing something like that is maybe a little easier because we're a small team we like both work from home we have a small like warehouse like we don't have as many expenses as maybe some of the big brands who have teams of like 20 plus employees and so I guess it's all just about like where and how the money is distributed I I think most companies are structured in a way where like they're still spending like they don't have leftover money because their their structure is just so different and the the people who are making the big decisions are like more corporate minded maybe than Mm -hmm. skate minded and so yeah Yeah. it's really interesting to learn about that and like how other brands are run and and yeah I think it would be amazing to see more skate brands do that but if I were to be realistic I don't really think it's gonna happen because too many people need to get paid (laughs) Um, and yeah that's just what I that's just what I see yeah Yeah. I mean I just I just want to you know spotlight you both and and really say that it's really appreciative when we see y'all take the time to look for people that you don't usually see because it's usually the same people over and over and over and it's like come on already (laughs) like let's see other types of skaters let's see what how diverse the community is and i know it's not easy Mm -hmm. but it takes when companies do that when you i see y'all share people's stories and then some people don't even have your boots on and you're sharing their stuff. Yeah. And it's 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 beautiful to see because it's not typical that from other brands and it's it's special. And you know, I, I would say mm. you're definitely on on the right track doing that. And that's yeah. nice. Thanks. Thanks, Sugu. Thanks, Sugu. <laughs> and you know, you say like it's not that easy, but also it's not that hard. I right. think that's the important thing. That's but true. like it's like, you know it it takes a little bit of extra work but it's not that hard yeah and I think that was one of the things that when we started like our original chuffed crew was five of us and we were all pretty close friends and we were just all diverse not because I went and like was like I need to 
scout me a diverse team. It was just, <laughs> it, don't was do that. That. it was don't just, do that. it was just like who we were. And I think the right. thing that was frustrating for us was that like what we were seeing at the time was not reflective of our community or mm. our scene or, and we were like, it's not because roller skating isn't diverse. It's just not what we're being shown. Yeah. And so, like, maybe some of these brands all just do hang out with people who all look the same. I don't know. But, like, you know, it's just wasn't wasn't what we were doing before we had a brand. So when we had a brand, we wanted to make sure that it was reflective of our community. And then that became as the brand grew it was like okay we got to make sure that like we always keep focused on that and like, representation when we're sharing yeah. content to like share a wide range of content because it cannot be like I don't think it can be underestimated people say it all the time that like you've got to see people doing something that look like you to feel like you mm-hmm, can do mm-hmm. it like I think yeah. it's just like it can't be underestimated yeah um so yeah, like I, I, I think it's improved a lot, and I think other brands are doing this a lot better now. Um, some, some, yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. yeah. But it has, it's, it's moving, it's moving yeah. in a, in a direction for sure. So it's not hard to like be inclusive, um, but why is it so hard to be accessible? Because a lot of the answers we're getting from companies is why can't this be more affordable? In my in my opinion, Chuffed is the best quality skate at the most affordable rate. And oh, thank you. So I'm just curious, um, in a perfect world, like what would it take to be more so accessible? For us, like I don't know if everyone knows about this, but it can be sort of found through our website we have like a financial support program where people can get a discount on their skates if they are having issues purchasing them at the moment it only it only runs through our australian warehouse because we hold the most stock here but it still works like so and again that comes back to the fact that we can because we don't have to answer to somebody who's like no our profit margin is this much and if we drop below it you know the world explodes or whatever like we we just don't have to answer to anyone else so we can and I don't know like I'm sure other people can but it's like do they want to I'm not sure skates are expensive to make like it's not a lie that there's a lot of parts and they're, they're expensive to make um and they're expensive to make well but there is still things that we can do as a as brands and communities to make them more accessible to those who need them. Like we have Carolina from Colombia who works for us as well. Um, and she manages all of our branding for the Americas. And the other day she got an email from a group who wanted to do like skate programs um, for like underprivileged kids. And she was like, can we send them some skates? Like, I think we should send them some skates and like, we like they still paid like a small amount but it was well below our cost on them it was just like to cover you know a little bit of that and it's something we can do because we're like well yeah it's a good cause and we want to do it so we're going to send them some skates but I don't think that everyone who works for a skate company has that privilege to just be able to say yes there's a lot more like red tape that they have to work through so I don't really know what the answer is I guess like Fire the old dudes running the show. Take them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yep. know what the answer is. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's just, it's just difficult because I know a lot of really good people work for brands who would like to do more, and they can't always do what they want to be able to do, and that yeah. must be a hard position to be in as well. Right. Um, I was gonna ask what, but I feel like it's been talked about, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Um, yeah. So as far as community outreach, um, what is Chuff Skates doing to get more people involved in skating, especially in the Aboriginal community? And, um, mm-hmm. you know, like what's going on? What are y'all doing? Or what do you plan to do or hope to do one day? Sure. You want to talk about the picnics first, I guess? And you, you're running a program right now. The Oh, it actually... Like, so we have this thing called our rollout program, which is basically like not for profit and community groups can access skates for very cheap prices. And we've 
done those programs with lots of different groups now, but I actually coached one with another one of our team members um, recently about an hour from my place, which was like an Indigenous kids group. And I actually volunteered there before Chuffed existed. So they reached out to me again and were like, let's bring roller skating back. And um, they were able to get a grant to get some funding. And it's so fun, like teaching these Aboriginal kids to skate. Like it's just like it's one way to really remember what is good about skating when sometimes it can be like so many other things going on and you're like feeling a little drained like that time is so nice and that's just ended because the school term that it was running through ended but they still have the skates and now they can run their own programs like whenever they want so essentially like making them sustainable beyond us needing to go there is really important I think and then we do like meetups I want to say quarterly but sometimes it depends (laughs) on weather and things called skate picnics which Sugu mostly organizes yeah which I mean they're for any community there from for anyone who wants to come and I wouldn't say they specifically help um specifically Aboriginal communities but anyone can come yeah anyone can come they're just the location of them is usually where we live so people who are further away from that well can't come um but coming back to the representation um for example, Tia, who is one of our skaters in the team, is an Aboriginal skater. And I think it's really important to have her and to give her a big platform and a big image inside Australia. And she just represents Aboriginal people with so much passion. That is what we were saying before. I think any Aboriginal kid that would see Tia would be like, whoa, that can be me, you know? She just did this Um, performance that was like a proper theatre show and she had to go for five weeks. Like she got, she auditioned and she got like recruited to do this performance um, where it was like this extreme show with a BMX and skateboard yeah. and there was ramps. Oh, anyway, I think she I just... saw the more... yeah. I saw the yeah. clips from that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. And she was on the news and like she just did so much with that opportunity that um, I think those things really help. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's hard because now with the brand, it's like it's sometimes a little bit like I don't know you freeze a bit because the world is so big and you're like I want to do this thing that we do here like everywhere and it's not necessarily possible but as much as we can like we try to enable other people to do things in their communities if they reach out to us and like if we can like even just provide you know prizes for meetups or like help people promote their events or comps like we get a lot of requests and as much as we can, we like to support other people to do things in their communities. Cause at the end of the day, like we're just a few people that can't do everything. And I, um, I'm going to add just one other thing is that I think another thing that we really try is to make whatever event that we do, um, open to all levels and open to all people Mm -hmm. Um, because I think that's something that we're seeing more and more is that there's these roller skate events happening but they're competitions for really really good skaters and they're not necessarily catered for newer skaters so the only like bigger event that we do which is Quiletics yeah we've done a part of it that is kind of like a competition but the whole point of this event during the day is for we basically divide everyone who comes into four houses and they're all mixed teams of different levels and then they all have to compete together and play games and play That's games cool. throughout the day and some of the games are like an egg and spoon race. Yeah, so egg like, and spoon race. You just have to be able to skate in a straight line. Like yeah. you don't have to do a flip or whatever. Whereas um, then there's activities that are more curated for higher level skaters. Mm. And I think that's a really cool way to get skaters of different levels to know each other and work together. Mm. And yeah, just accessibility, as we were saying, of yeah. not only the product, but the skating itself. Mm. 
Yeah. I really like that mixing it up. I feel like that's something important that we try to do at Derby practices is we mm. s- make sure that it's just not two pe- new people working together and two like veterans. Totally. Like everybody needs yeah. to mix it up so we're all learning off of each other and like helping each other at the same time. Um Yeah. yeah. So I need to ask because like I have not left the country. I don't like going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I like my house. <laughs> um, but like we live in florida it's we think it's jumanji here Uh but like australia (laughs) is like florida on steroids but with like more creatures (laughs) like what is it like skating in the elements there like what is the weather Mm. like like, i don't even know you have like you have alligators though like (laughs) i feel like you have plenty of creatures and things too in florida i don't know i feel like the weather here is probably pretty similar to florida i haven't been there but like seems like it gets real hot there as well yeah, um oh, yeah. our friend Oe so, compared it to being like inside of a mouth mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. so where i where i grew up um on the gold coast is very similar to that very hot most of the year round very humid very humid where we live now is a little milder and does get cold in the winter mm-hmm. and it does i mean you're right we do have elements there's a lot of storms and fires and like and creatures as you said creatures you (laughs) just you just don't think about it I guess once you're here and you just you just do it there's I'm I think the U.S. is similar but there's weather phenomenon that are like cyclical over here which I'm I'm from Spain I'm from the Mediterranean and we just don't have this kind of stuff. <laughs> but we just we just had two years of nonstop rain. That's a oh, slight wow. exaggeration, but there was a lot of rain. There was a lot of rain. <laughs> just did yeah. not stop raining. It was a lot of rain. And now apparently that's ended. So that was La Nina and now it's El Nino. Yeah, and yeah, now yeah. it's going to be no rain for a whole year. And it, that's good for skating. Yeah, yeah, it's good for skating, but then like <laughs> the fires happen. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 I mean, the world is broken. What can we say? Australia <laughs> is probably more broken than most of yeah. it. Um, so our weather is wild, but yeah, we 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 survive. But yeah, I was the just weather curious, can be really because when I see like other skaters come to Florida from other states, they can't handle this like weather. Yeah. Like yeah. it's hot. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just a different game in this kind of weather. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I'm I imagine you important. <laughs> Yeah, you would struggle in the cold, I'm guessing. Um, I am from New York. I grew up in okay. New York my whole life. I moved here like 13 years ago. Um, mm. So I can do the cold. I just don't want to anymore. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, fair. yeah. Fair. I think for me, like I visited California and I think it's elevation for me. Like if I'm higher up, I was like, I can't breathe. That's not enough air. Like what's right. going on? Yeah. But for it's me, very it's, dry. Yeah. It's very dry over there. I found California dry. Yeah, like, dry. yeah, the, the humidity here yeah. is really More different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry. No, no, no. We're kidding. We're kidding. We're kidding. We're kidding. Um, so tell us, what's your favorite boot so far? Ooh. Oh, you know what Sugi was just saying today? That she thinks her new favorite is the Hell on Quads boot, which is not Can actually. Can I show it? Yeah, actually, we mm-hmm. have one right here. Um, is this out yet? This is... No, it's coming in August. Ooh, we got a sneak um, peek. Yeah, so That's like Carolina has been writing it because this is this is a co this is a collab with Hell on Quads, which is Carolina and Moon from Colombia, and like they've been writing it, so people have seen it, but like it's very nice um it's so good looking yeah it's a very it's a very good looking boot um but you know what is funny i i <laughs> i still don't skate the pro boot because it's really hard and i know that's like <laughs> what the world that's what the world wants but and i'm i think it's a great boot but i still just like how normal skates like you put them on it feels like a bit of a glove foamy soft like it doesn't hurt <laughs> um so you know like i still i still just like our standard my I'm wanderer sorry. felt great as soon as i put like i didn't yeah. feel like i had to break and it I, at I, all i like that yeah. but i know a lot of people yeah the pro boots definitely not like that i went through some but you like pain. how it forms i so, do yeah, yeah i yeah. do like the hardness i think 
um yeah it's it's just helped my skating in general mm. to hold grinds and stuff mm. um I think if you're more talented <laughs> like you <laughs> you like don't need as much you know support because you go faster into things but I'm like Ooh. <laughs> um but I think I th- I I think my favorite boot now is going to be the Helen Quad, which is not as hard as the yeah, Pro, exactly. but not as soft as the Wanderers. Yeah, yeah. it's a middle yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. okay, which looks looks pretty nice. Mm. Yeah. So when is the Skate Sunday boot coming out? That's what we need. <laughs> oh, to know. Hey, when, are we, when are we doing the ice cream lining? Like you know, oh, like the that whole would be thing. A like, sexy skate. That would be. You know good what I'm saying? Just get skate. it real colorful. Yeah. Like real, just mm, ice cream. Like what is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would be a beautiful skate. I'm sure of it. 2024 there we go there we go um I I think that's all the questions we have do you have any questions for us um or do you want to tell us what's next yeah I think we've been bouncing bouncing back a little as we've gone through yeah I just mainly wanted to know about your communities and stuff I guess like one question we always ask our guests at the end which would be nice to hear from you is like what you would like to see in the future of the roller skating community Mm. Um, I I mean this kind of I, I don't know. I would like to see a little <laughs> bit more accountability. Um, you know, when people are speaking about their experiences of having hardships in this community, I would just like to see a little bit more accountability and maybe an apology here and there <laughs> when people mm. get actually hurt. Um, I just think it's important to acknowledge mistakes. And Mm -hmm. that's the best way to move forward, not just pretend Mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know how I could top that. But (laughs) (laughs) um, definitely that, um, you know, because that's something I feel like we've all kind of it's a a reality that a lot of us have hit, especially in the U.S. Like, I don't know about over there, but, um, you know. I would love to definitely see more people skating, um, more visibility, more representation, and, um, you know, just people enjoying themselves, more skate parks, more spaces to skate, um, being able to skate outside safely (laughs) without people Mm -hmm. harassing you, um, that type of thing, um, that, you know, like... I just want people to also believe in themselves a little bit more and and give themselves a little more credit. Like I hear a lot of people down about themselves uh, skating wise. They're like, I suck or I this and that. And it's like Mm -hmm. you're doing something that most people don't do, you know? And my friend Adele says it all the time. Like you're, you're a bad bitch. Like, you you know, you gotta realize (laughs) that you, you are, you are doing it. Like you're, there are people that wish they could and they're not doing it. And yeah, and for the most part, yeah. people are looking at you because they've never seen a roller skater before. So totally. A lot of us yeah. just in our own heads. So I like, you know, I would like to see people just feel themselves more. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Get on them. That's like, true. I, gr- yeah. I, I grind that rail. Yeah. And what? <laughs> I dropped it. Yeah. I, I, was, I skated in a straight line. And what? Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. I think that's a really, really good answer. I like that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for chatting. Yeah, of Thank course. You. Thank you for having us. So we're so happy <laughs> to have you on our podcast. And we're so happy to have you. <laughs> so if people want to find you, where can they find you? What handles can we find you on? You can find us at Chuff Skates on Instagram and on TikTok now and... because we are new, new generation. <laughs> um, and on our website, um or you can mainly email. instagram <laughs> yeah that's the one we check youtube we have edits on youtube chuff skates yeah, you can find us like pretty much anywhere yeah. you go look at just it. google chuff skates <laughs> yeah. nice. right. well thank you so much um, again we're so excited that you were our first international guest yeah. and we hope we get to talk soon and maybe meet in person yeah. you want to come to florida sometime yeah you're always i welcome. would love to we'd love to thank you so much for having us and have good, a night. Night. good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. We're nice going to night. bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're going to have lunch. <laughs> what a good influence this brand is. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I just like seeing a brand actually doing the work for the skaters. And I just, I didn't know about 
the many different ways that they give back. And you, it's not important for them to be that vocal about it because that's not what it's about. But it is very surprising considering all of these brands that just, you know, make a lot of money off of skaters and we're not really sure what they're getting out of it. Yeah. Back. Exactly. What are we getting back? Yeah. What is your skate community doing for you? <laughs> <laughs> what is your skate company doing for you? <laughs> It just, it really does show you. And I feel like, you know, it at least makes me better, feel better about buying from them too. Yeah, know? definitely. Take my money. Take. I want to see it to go to my a card? good place, to a cause, <laughs> and to a good skate. I mean, honestly, it's a beautiful brand. They are not skimping on quality. Mm-hmm. And they're collabing with small creators and some that we know, <laughs> some that have been sponsors on our <laughs> show. So you know, head over to Chef Skates and, you know, show your support. Buy something if you want, if you can. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you're looking for me, you can find me at Rolling With Rosie. And if you're looking for me, you can find me at Hey Shorty with three Y's and two underscores. And if you're looking for us, you can find us at Skate Sunday. Sunday. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye. Bye.